हेलो फ्रेंड्स मेरा नाम जगविंदर है आज से हम एक नई दैट्स यूजुअली टाइड टू एन अकाउंट लाइक हेलो एंड वेलकम एवरीवन आई हैव मेड डबल पिविटेड विद अ गोलो हेलो एंड वेलकम So this video is going to be in terms of how to prepare for the OCP and I will help you with it. Okay? So the first thing that I recommend you checking out is the exam structure. So you need 70 out of 100 points to pass and 40 of those points is AD, right? So obviously we're going to cover AD and then you get can can get 60 points for the standalone. Okay? So 60 points for standalone. There's three standalone machines and there is also three AD machines, right? All in one chain, essentially. There's li very limited resources in terms of how to prepare for chain specifically, but I recommend doing a lot of AD standalone machines, uh, and that's going to cover a lot. And then obviously the practice for chain specifically as well, right? So yeah, sixty plus forty, that's hundred points. But you only need seven out of hundred points to pass the exam. But after that is of course the documentation. Okay, so. They they have documentation requirements right here. They're very strict and failure to provide sufficient documentation will result in reduced or zero points being awarded. Okay, so I definitely heard people fail because they managed to get the points, but they failed the documentation. And in my opinion, documentation is not something that's difficult at all. Okay, it's very very simple in my opinion. But you don't want to neglect it. You want to understand kind of like the meta or the basics of how to actually pass it. Okay. So if you're modifying in the expert code, you need to essentially highlight that in the code itself, right? And provide actual steps in the documentation. Also in the documentation itself, it's extremely important that everything is reproducible, right? The main thing is essentially that someone else can go through your exact steps that you've outlined in the exam report and they can actually exploit it as well. That means that if you have some custom code and you haven't provided the the uh, the actual code right or if you have some custom environment variables but you aren't specifying that in the report then if someone's trying to repeat those steps they obviously will fail right or if you simply forget about a big step in the actual expert chain so this is very very important now you have to have some screenshot requirements as well in terms of how to actually get the points that you want okay so you need 7 out of 100 points to pass and when you're actually going to show that you have initial access on let's say the standalone right so you get 10 points for initial access and you get and more points for previous per machine so per standalone machine you can get 20 points 20 times 3 is 60 right that's the total of points you can get with standalone now you have to essentially show the ip information for any of these specific commands on windows and then i also recommend you you essentially type out the flag like this and then you run who uh ip config and then you can also run uh like host name or who am i or something like that in the same command if you want okay just to really show that yes this is a fully interactive shell and is fully compromised and here is all the proof and collect all of the screenshots right because if you lack any um proof in your in your reporting then you won't get points for it right so it's very very important that you collect all of the proof Now luckily they do have some documentation templates and I highly recommend that you use this again. I do not recommend that you try to create all of it from scratch. If you're not aware of these templates, 100% use this, okay? And I will link all of it to you, so don't you worry in the link down below. But yeah, definitely use this and then let's continue. So, did you have some exam restrictions as well, right? This is one of the most common questions that I get. Um people asking in the comments on YouTube and also people asking in the VIP section in Discord right that's inside of the academy and obviously happy to help right but these are the basics that you have to know so now this one is tricky it's a spoofing right that's why i recommend when you run responder and i also cover this in the list but let's see but this is the active directory yeah when you're using responder I just recommend that you use dash capital A, okay? Um because then it won't perform essentially in a spoofing, but it will when you're essentially sending a request back to your uh responder, right? And you're then you will essentially capture the net until uh v2 hash, right? And this is perfectly allowed. So responder is allowed, but 
it is not allowed to essentially use spoofing capabilities of it. Essentially, just run it with capital A analyze mode, and it will not be doing that again. Okay? So, handy tip tree right there. Now, any commercial tools. Huh? Uh, so like Metasploit Pro, again, you can use Metasploit or Burp Pro, but you cannot use Burp Pro, but you can use Burp, okay? So just important details to keep in mind. You can use Metasploit once on a machine, right? And not several times. Um, that will also be covered here, but just keep that in mind, okay? So commercial tools is a no-go. So you can use Burp, you can use Metasploit, you can use Metasploit once, but you cannot use Metasploit Pro or Burp Pro, okay? The same thing goes with these type of tools right here. There are automatic exploitation. Okay, so this is definitely a category that is a bit vague. Um, you can essentially use tools like Third Pie. You can use tools like Shadow Credentials or techniques like Shadow Credentials with uh, Certify. Uh, even though they sound like auto exploitation to some extent, those are fine. Um, but yeah, you can definitely ask me questions inside of the VIP section if you have questions, right? And definitely just check through the logs as well because there's a lot of things that already has been answered, right? But definitely have a look through right here. Um, this is very important as well. Something like uh, ChatGPT is not allowed on the exam, okay? So don't go into the exam, just ChatGPT things and hope that that's going to be fine. That is not allowed. Um, yes, so using LLMs and AI chatbots is strictly prohibited, again. Okay? Now, what you're mentioning here is that when you're Googling something and Google is giving you like that overview, they're saying you're not dis required to disable tools with built-in AI features, right? So they're saying that you're not required to disable those. So keep those in mind, but these type of chatbots or this type of AI is tricking for bit. Okay, uh, let's continue. So these are all of the things that you can essentially get disqualified for, right? Um, so definitely keep this in mind, like using banned tools, for, um, using the Mertopria payload on multiple machines, right? You can essentially use Metasploit once. Um, and you can also not use it on pivoting because it technically counts as pin machines. Um, but yeah, definitely just keep all of these things in mind. Now, back to the actual question, right? How do I prepare for it? So I just wanted to give you all of that overview to start off with because it's important and it's handy to keep in mind. Okay, so Offsec has actually created a, a learning plan, like 12 weeks, and then I also have one for 24 weeks, right? Which I'll get to. And you can go through all of this and essentially just, you know, they've tried to like structure it like week one, week two, week three, etc. And I think it's solid. Now, I don't think it's optimal because of basic things like spending time on learning Nessus. You, can't, you, you essentially cannot use Nessus on the exam. So it's kind of useless to some extent, right? Now, I'm not bashing at all on this, uh, on this roadmap at all. They definitely have some extremely handy things. Um, if you like the resources and you like how they teach, right? then definitely check it out. But yeah, it's not going to be 100% optimal, but I mean, it doesn't have to be optimal, right? So, uh, so definitely check it out if you're interested. Um, and uh, here again, it's the 24 week uh, plan. So you can go through this as well. Check it out if you want. And once again, I'll leave all of these resources down below. Um, so yes, keep that in mind. Now back to this one, right? So this is another way you can essentially prepare. Now this is the Lane Kusanaga list, right? I said back to this one, but I haven't showed it in this video. <laughs> this is a good way to really just get started on doing different uh, important fields, right? Or sections such, such as like Linux initial access and privisc, Windows initial access and privisc, and then Active Directory, right? So very, very, very important to get familiarized and just really get volume training. Offsec has some resources that are essentially saying that the more machines you do, the higher percentage uh, success rate they see in the labs or, or in the exam. And of course that makes sense, right? So definitely have a look on the link if you have not yet. I'm just trying to provide you useful resources. And you can use uh, sites like Proving Grounds, like Hack the Box, like Try Hacked Me, like, um, like Voln Hub, etc. And definitely check that out, right? Now, there is a similar list, NetSec Focus as well, that you can also check out that's also handy. The main thing that I like about this list, I don't think there's perfect, but again, it doesn't have to be in my opinion, right? It's solid. And it's a great way to just kind of get you started and to just get some reps in, okay? Uh, they've essentially tried to simulate or mimic machines that they kind of think is similar to the OCP. And I think that's a great idea, right? Now, there's one very important thing. When you're actually doing machines, uh, is to make sure that you actually have the techniques that you need to know to be able to pass. Because you can do a lot of machines, but if you're 
blind to specific techniques, right? Like how to essentially do anti-LM theft, etc. in different ways, then you will kind of be blind. And that's kind of why I made this resource right here. It's, just, it's a, another thing that we have inside of our academy. And the entire purpose with it is to go from clueless, right? So you're going to start off, like assuming we don't know anything, right? With all of these things, we're just going to assume the we're clueless. I never learn one basic things. Like obviously these things are very basic, but I just want to essentially give you something to focus on, like specific tools for the, and specific techniques that is very important for the OCP, right? Only made specifically for the OCP to make sure that you understand important techniques to the to pass, right? And the goal for you is to become proficient, right? Or at least basic competence for after two, but ideally proficient at all of the different things in all of the different sections, right? This is about related to initial access. This is about related to active directory. And this is pivoting, and this is Windows Privilege Escalation, and this is Numis Privilege Escalation as well, right? So basically covering all of it, and that is one of the things that we cover, okay? Now, I wanted to show you some more things. It's actually inside of here. You get access to all of these resources, right? This is inside Hack Academy. And as you can see, we have a few hundred members at the moment, right? 315, and it's really awesome to see the people are loving the resources. You will get access to all of these things, several courses, but the one that I actually want to focus on is obviously the OCP specific course, right? So I have the OCP myself, and the only reason I made this course uh, is so that I can make the best resource that I could possibly think of uh, uh, to crush the OCP, because that's what I want all of you to do. So this is the introduction of the course, right? Obviously, we cover a lot, uh, but this is the introduction that will essentially show you how to use the entire course. And after you do that, I recommend that you go to the roadmap, okay? This is essentially covering the bread and butter of the entire thing. It looks very small and it looks very condensed. It's because it's extremely condensed, okay? So, right here, if you if you follow this roadmap in detail, you will 100% be ready to start the OCD, right? 100%, because I made sure to cover all that you need. Um, the Active Directory section, here is a checklist plus additional resources, right? So obviously I can't show in this video, but essentially it's the hyperlink to this resource and course, and obviously I cover useful tools for Active Directory as well as some text-based stuff, but then we have a ton of videos that is essentially giving you the methodology to, cr to crush the OCP in, because that's what I want you to do. It's over 24 hours line, and follow this roadmap in detail, right? Inside of this checklist plus additional resources, you will essentially get a um, you will essentially get a checklist of several action steps that you need to do um, to be able to pass. When it comes to Active Directory, the same thing with privacy escalation, the same thing with tumbling and pivoting, right? Whether it's like single port forwarding or whether it's uh, essentially pivoting inside of Active Directory environment, etc. Cover all of it. And then the same thing for initial access, right? But we also cover the exam and we also covered report writing, right? because I want to cover all of it. And if I didn't cover these things, it wouldn't be covering all of it. And I also recommend, as I mentioned previously, to get basic competence, superficial status on all of the things it's mentioned there, right? This is one of the, the hyperlinks inside of the thing. And yeah, this was the one I mentioned earlier. It's important that you do that as well. I also wanted to mention the fact that we have an overview over the room that essentially we cover in the course. And it's not just walkthroughs, right? It's trying my absolute best to give you the methodology and advising you which tools to use, which tools wouldn't be allowed on the OCP and giving you a way to stay structured while there's so much information in front of you. And really just snaking my climb and explaining because I understand that when you're new to the OCP, having someone that actually has the OCP, taking their time to really explain things, showing their actual methodology, showing them struggling or perhaps a different machine and how they solve it, how did they research, and really just explaining everything as I go. And also, you know, just giving you the real experience. I've seen some YouTubers just nothing through the machines. Like it's actually like a walkthrough, but not doing it like full or blindly. I want to show you exactly how I think and exactly how I solve things and giving you the tools and methodology and that you can replicate and do alongside me and really get the experience, right? So that's what I want to mention. And I also wanted to mention that we have causes the Mac to direct your canes inside of fair. This is something that I took extremely much lacking in the area of OCP prep, and it's definitely something that I hurried a band for, so I created it. And I will continue to create more chains as well, because it's I'm sure the only really good chains that you can get to prepare for OCP is inside the OCP labs themselves, and you get three, right? Inside of the challenge labs, 
you get the A, B, and C. Okay, so those are great. I highly recommend that you do them. But those are just three machines. Obviously, we relied more practice, and that's why essentially I made it this as well. Okay, so yeah, here you can see uh, the Hack Academy dot local domain, and me essentially covering the uh, the chain and beacon and explaining everything as I go through. It. But and that's really what I wanted to show you in this video. I hope this was useful. I hope you're not confused anymore. I hope to take action, and I would love to see you inside and. I also forgot to mention the fact that we have a Discord as well that you can get access to uh, once you essentially get inside of the Hack Academy and join all of the Hammer School students that we have already inside. And as you can see, people are passing the OCP and we're all helping each other. People are staying motivated and really just giving people the reassurance that people need, right? Because it's easy to essentially have things that you're worrying about or like you're very unsure about a specific attack or like is this allowed, is this allowed, not allowed, etc. And I really just want to be that reassurance for you guys so you can just work, work, work and actually have the best chance of crushing the OCP and not having to waste money on exam retakes or essentially extending the labs, right? So yeah. I really hope that gives you all the information that you need. You can try it out by clicking the link down below on the WAP link and you can try it for free for a day to just see if you like it because I don't want to take your money unless you actually love it, right? So yeah, that's what I wanted to cover in this video. I wish you the best of luck on your OCP journey and have an awesome, awesome day. Thank you so much.